Hi gang, in this video we're going to make a Burberry plaid. And since it's such a simple plaid to make, I thought we'd go ahead and add a twill pattern too so it looks really textured and beautiful. Before we get started, please click that like button and subscribe. I've got an image of a Burberry scarf, of course, very beautiful. And in order to make our plaid, we're gonna need the correct colors. So let me show you how you can select them from an existing image. We're going to click on the eyedropper tool to open up the eyedropper options. You wanna make sure that appearance in both columns does not have a check mark, all right? If it is checked, then this isn't gonna work. It's very important to make sure that you uncheck appearance. And while you're in this window, we wanna drop down from point sample to three by three or five by five average. This is gonna give us a more accurate color because it won't select a single pixel. It'll average a few together and give us a better, more accurate color. Now we can take the eyedropper and select the colors we need. Where we wanna pick the color from are the areas where two uh, directions of the same color overlap each other. So in this instance, I wanna click this little black square for my black, and then I can click the plus button down here to add it to my swatches. Click okay, you can label them if you like. I'm gonna click in one of these squares to get my tan color, and again, new, click okay. The red, we want a box where red from both directions intersect, which is right here, and again, click new, click okay. And I'm gonna do the white as well because I know that this is not a pure white, it's a little bit of an off-white and this way I'll get a nice soft tone. And again, click okay. So now I've got my swatches here, let's put them into a group. I'm gonna click on the little file folder, make a new color group, we'll call it Burberry, click okay, and it put the, the last color I selected or the one I had selected when I created the group, it automatically put that one in. So all we need to do is drag the rest of our colors into the group. And here is my Burberry color group now and we can start creating our plaid. Now a Burberry plaid is really straightforward. We're gonna start by drawing a perfect square. So hold your shift key. The size doesn't really matter because we'll scale it up or down later. I'm gonna fill this with my tan color. The next stripe is a red one. So I'm gonna take my square, copy it, Controller Command C, paste in front, Controller Command F, and then squish one side to the size I want my red line to be. And that looks about right to me, and I'll fill it with red. Now I need the black and white stripes. So I'm gonna select this again. I'm gonna copy, paste in front, and we are gonna narrow it down so that we have the width that we want. The reason I keep copying everything from this original square is to make sure that the height is level for all of my squares. Now this one is going to be white, and I'm just gonna visually kind of make sure it is in between and that I have an even amount of my camel color on either side. Now for the black stripes. Again, we'll copy, paste in front, and I'm gonna drag this to the size I want my black stripe. And if you take a look at the Burberry scarf, you can see that the black and white stripes are about double the size of the red stripe. So that's what I've done. I've made it about double the size. We'll fill it with black. I'm going to hold my Alt key and my Shift key and drag a copy and let it snap into place on the other side. And for the third one, let's use the Blend tool. I'm gonna select both black stripes, go over to the Blend tool, click on it once, and then click on the first stripe and the second stripe. And it's solid, but that's okay. We're gonna go back and double click on the Blend tool again to open up the options switch from smooth color to specified steps and change it to one. Click OK and now we've got our stripes all spaced out the way we need them. We're halfway there. Now there's two different ways we can do this. We're gonna group this together and first we're gonna do what 
I think of as kind of the cheat way, but I'm going to show it to you. So we'll select this. We're going to double click on rotate, type in 90 degrees and copy. Now you'll see if I open up my layers that we've got one going in one direction and one going in the other direction. If we select the one on top and we change the opacity of it to 50%, we will have what looks like a Burberry plaid. And this will work a lot of the time. Let's go ahead and drag this into the swatches. Whoops, control Z. We want to make sure we get both layers in there. So let's drag that into the swatches. I'll zoom out and draw a big shape and let's see how it looks. Make sure that we're in fill and not stroke and we'll fill with our pattern swatch. So there is in basic terms, our Burberry plaid. But I think we should do something a little bit fancier this time. I'm gonna move this one out of the way. We're gonna zoom back into the swatch we were making. Now I'm going to select that top swatch piece and we're going to restore the opacity to 100. Let's go ahead and add a twill pattern. I'm going to turn off my vertical stripe and we're only going to work with the one on top, which is the horizontal stripe. We need to select it. I'm going to ungroup it because I need to select my blend and expand it. Object, expand. Since we use a blend, it's really important to do this or the next step's not going to work. Uncheck Fill and click OK. We're going to grab the rectangle tool and draw a line that is much, much longer than our box and very, very skinny. Um, the width of this is going to be the size of our twill weave. And we need it to be in a color that's not currently in our design. So blue, green, yellow, purple, any of the above will work fine. I'm going to zoom in a little closer and make my line a little bit skinnier because I want this to be really fine. I need to rotate this 45 degrees. So I'll click R for rotate, start dragging on my desktop and then hold my shift key so it locks into place at 45 degrees. Now with the black arrow, I'm gonna select it near the center of the rectangle and move it into place so that it snaps into this corner. And to make sure I've done it right, I'm going to zoom in really close, change my view to outline, and we can see here that the center of my rectangle is perfectly seated on this upper left-hand corner. Let's go back to our other view and zoom out a little bit. We're going to do the same thing for the bottom right corner. With my black arrow, I'm going to Alt, select, and drag out a copy of this. And now I'm going to move it into place, same as before, and we're watching for that little intersect to pop up so we know we're in the right place. And it's not a bad idea to check, change the view to outline, and see this one is not perfectly in line. So we're going to grab it and just snap it into place. We can go back to our regular view, and now we're going to do a blend. Select both of these tiny little rectangles, click once on blend, click on one rectangle, and then click on the other rectangle. Now we need to add more rectangles. So double click on blend. We're gonna change it from smooth color to specified steps. Highlight the number in the box and use your arrow key, your up arrow key on your keyboard to add lines until you're happy with the number of lines. Now I want so many that my spaces are about the same width as the lines so that it's a really even looking twill pattern. The only caveat to this is it must be an odd number or it won't work. And I like what this looks like, but I'm at an even number 62. So I'm gonna add one more to make it 63. And now this should work very nicely for me. Click okay. We need to expand the blend. So once again, object expand, and we're only expanding the object, not the fill. So we'll uncheck it and click OK. Grab the black arrow and select everything. We're going to go to Pathfinder, divide, followed by right click, ungroup. And I'm going to deselect everything. So now we need to get rid of all of the purple. And I could easily drag and select it on the outside, 
But what happens is when I delete it, I don't get the purple that's going through here. And I certainly don't want to be selecting these one at a time. That will be tedious torture. So we're going to use the magic wand tool. The magic wand is up here and it works just like the one in Photoshop. Click on it, click on one of the purple lines and it will select all of them. Now I can hit delete on my keyboard. Now that the twill pattern is built in to my horizontal stripe, I can go down to my vertical stripe and turn it back on. But let's group this first. It'll help my layers stay a lot cleaner. We'll group those first, much better. We'll turn on the vertical line and you can see now we actually have a plaid with a twill pattern in it. So we'll select the whole thing, drag it into our swatches, and let's take a look at it. We'll fill this with our new finished twill pattern. And there we go, a beautiful Burberry plaid with a twill weave. I hope you learned something new. If so, I'd really appreciate a like and let me know what you'd like me to cover in the future. See you next time.